Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Pray that you all are having a glorious and wonderful day in the Lord. Today is uh, Tuesday, August the 20th, and I uh, haven't been on Facebook Live in a while to do our reading. Thank God for Brother Irvy Williams, who stood in my stead on last week and did the readings for us. We thank God for you and for all of those who've um, been standing in the gap for pastor as pastor's uh, work schedule and all have been keeping me from um, getting on to Facebook Live at a reasonable enough time to do the reading. So I salute each and every one of you for who's been standing in my stead um, to do this. But I am excited to be back on live. I pray that you all have been having a blessed summer thus far. And we're going to continue in our reading. We are almost finished the book of Genesis. We're going to make our way into the next book of the Bible. We still have a few more uh, chapters in the book of Genesis to get through, and we're going to do that even now. So I encourage you to let folk know that Pastor is online, that Pastor is live, as we seek even now to read the Word of God together so that we can continue to study to show ourselves approved in the Word of the Lord. Let's go to the Lord now, even now, and pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this, this Tuesday night, God. We thank you for the opportunity to break open your word together, God, to read and to study your word. God, we pray even now, God, that you will remove any form of distraction that would keep us from focusing in on your word. God, we pray that you will even now bless this moment that we've set aside with you, God, in prayer and study of your word, God, that you will help us to increase in knowledge and in wisdom because we have taken the time to study your word. God, I pray even now that we'll be blessed by the reading and the receiving of your word, and that your people, God, will hear your voice, God, as we seek to be fed in you and by you, God, and to grow through the receiving of your word. We love you, we praise you, and we give you your name, all the glory, honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen and amen. Good evening, Brittany. So glad to see you online. Um, we're going to the book of Genesis. And we're in Genesis chapter 36. Um, we're going to go from Genesis 36 to 37. Um, and on Thursday, my plan is to read um, Genesis uh, 38 and 39. I'm going to try to double up so we can catch up, so we can get through Genesis and, and get to the next book of the Bible. Amen. Uh, so we're going to be in Genesis chapter 36. Uh, and the text reads as follows. Now this is the genealogy of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, Aholabama, the daughter of Ana, and the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, and Basma, Ishmael's daughter, uh, sister of Nehoja, Nehoboth, Nebahoth. Now Ada bore Eliphaz to Esau, and Basmeth bore Ruel, and Aholabama bore uh, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the possessions of his household, his cattle, uh, and his animals, and all of his goods, uh, which he had gained in the land of Canaan, and went to a country away from the presence of his brother Jacob. For their possessions were too great for them to, to dwell together. The land where they were strangers could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And this is, is the genealogy of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These were the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the sons of Ada, the wife of Esau, and Rewell, the son of Basma, the wife of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zepho, Getam, and Kenaz. Now, Timnah was the concubine of Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bore Amalek uh, to Elphaz. These were the sons of Ada, 
Esau's wife. Verse 13, these were the sons of Reuel, Nathaf, Zerah, Shammah, and Misa. These were the sons of Basma, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Elohom, Elobama, uh, Esau's wife, the daughter of Ana, the son, the daughter of Zibion. And she bore to Esau Jewish, Jelam, and Korah. Verse 15. These were the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the sons of Elphaz, the firstborn son of Esau were Chief Taman, Chief Omar, Chief Zepho, Chief Kenaz, Chief Korah, Chief Getam, and Chief Amalek. These were the chiefs of Eliphaz, the land of Edom. They were the sons of Ada. These were the sons of Reuel, Esau's son. Chief Nahath, Chief Zerah, Chief Shema and chief Mizah. These were the chiefs of Reuel in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Basemath, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Aholabama, Esau's wife, chief Jeush, chief Jalam, and chief Korah. These were the chiefs who descended from Aholabama, Esau's wife, the daughter of Ana. These were the sons of Esau, who is Edom, and these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land. Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, Dishon, Ezir, and Desan. These were the chiefs of the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. And the sons of Lotan were Horai and Hemam. Lotan's sister was Timnah. These were the sons of Shobal, Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These were the sons of Zibion, both Asia and Anna. This was the Anna who found the water in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of his father, Zibion. These were the children of Anna, Dishon and Aholabama, the daughter of Anna. These were the sons of Dishon, Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Sharan. These were the sons of Ezir, Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan. These were the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aram. These were the chiefs of the Horites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shobal, Chief Zibion, Chief Ana, Chief Dishan, Chief Ezir, Chief Dishan. These were the chiefs of the Horites according to their chiefs in the land of Seir. Now there were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Verse 32, Bala, the sons of Beor, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Denhaba. And when Bala died, Jobab, the son of Zerah of Bozrah, reigned in his place. When Jobab died, Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. And when Husham died, Hadab, the son of Bedab, who attacked Midian, the field of Moab, reigned in his place. The name of his city was Abath. When Hadab died, Shamla of Mesrakha reigned in his place. And when Shamla died, Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. When Saul died, Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his place. And when Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, died, Hadar reigned in his place. And the name of this city was Pel. His wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of 
Meshabe. These were the names of the chiefs of Esau according to their families and the places by their names. Chief Timna, Chief Avla, Chief Jethath, Chief Aholebama, Chief Ela, Chief Peon, Chief Kenaz, Chief Tim Timan, Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdil, and Chief Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom according to their dwelling places in the land of their possession. Esau was the father of the Edomites. Let's go on to 37. Pastor is using the church app for his Bible, so give me a second. Left my Bible at the church. Here we go. Genesis 37, verse 1. Now Jacob dwelled in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was, in the, was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel, being Jacob, uh, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. So he made him a tunic of many colors. But his brothers saw that his father loved him more than all his brothers. They hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers. They hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream that I had dreamed. Verse seven, there we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, sure, shall I? You indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. This, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him, said to him, What is this dream you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Verse 12, Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and there he was wandering in the field. The man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? So he said to him, I'm seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. The man said, They have departed from here. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Verse 18. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what becomes of his dreams. But Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. 
And Reuben said to them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, which is in the wilderness. And do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers, they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many color, colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Verse 25. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And the brothers listened. Then the Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit. And he tore his clothes, and he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors. They brought it uh, to their father and said, We found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, it is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph has been torn to pieces. Verse 34, then Jacob tore his clothes, and put a sackcloth on his waist and mourned for his sons, his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and a captain of the guard. And this concludes the reading for today of God's word. I pray even now that you've been blessed by the reading and that you'll do as we've been instructed so many months ago, and that is to take these two chapters into your prayer closet, your prayer rooms, wherever it is you do your prayer and meditation with the Lord, and let the Lord minister unto you through the word. Some of you may be saying, well, pastor, what can I get from the reading today? The first was the genealogy of Esau. The second discussed the genealogy of Jacob and went into discussing Joseph was well, so rich and so full of lessons that we can even learn today. One thing that I learned from the reading today in Genesis 37 is you got to be careful of revealing too soon the visions and the dreams that God has given you. Not everybody can handle what God has put on the inside of you. Not everybody can handle the fact that God has called you to be exactly who you are. And some people will allow their jealousy and their envy and their desire to be like you or their desire to be used by God to fuel uh, their hatred against you. And instead of going to God and saying, God, use me, they'll become envious of what God has put on the inside of you. And so you've got to be careful of sharing the visions, the dreams, the anointings, the purpose that God has put on the inside of you with other folk, because not everybody can handle the fire that God has put on the inside of you. Sometimes you just got to pray and ask God to give you wisdom in this season where he has not yet revealed to the world what he has revealed to you. You've got to pray and say, God, help me to contain the vision until the time is right to reveal it to somebody else. And then, God, show me who it is that you want me to speak to so that the folk that I'm sharing the vision with are truly those that are going to help push the vision forward 
and not try to assassinate and kill the vision. Some of us have found ourselves in places and in spaces where we've been hindered and where we've been blocked simply because we shared what God gave us to the wrong people. So I want to encourage you in whatever area it is in your life, be careful who you share God's vision with. Sometimes you just got to let folk be shocked by the vision. Sometimes folk can't be in the implementation of the vision. Sometimes you just got to let folks see the vision as it's manifested. I don't know who that's for, but I pray that even now you allow God to minister to your soul and minister to your spirit through the word that we have read today. Remember, I'm going to come back on Thursday and we're going to finish uh, Genesis 38 and 39. And I'm trusting that we're going to continue to have a good time in the reading and studying of the word of our Lord and Savior. Well, God, we thank you for this time that we had together to read your word, to study your word together. God, I pray even now that you will allow us to be blessed even more as we take this word and go into our own individual study times to read and study together. God, I pray even now that you will bless our night, that you'll give us good rest and good sleep, that you'll protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, known and unknown that God shall bring healing where there needs to be healing, deliverance where there needs to be deliverance, that God, you continue to show yourself uh, the God of our lives. We honor you, we praise you, we bless your name, even now. It's in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Well, Zion, I love you. I look forward to seeing all of you on tomorrow for Bible study. Remember that God is king. He sits high, he looks low, he still rules, he still reigns. Remember that we love you. Remember to keep God first. I look forward to seeing, to seeing you tomorrow right here in the kingdom.